Hey, hey Kayla, I didn't know you was gonna come with this one. Hey man, I know y'all see you with the glasses, man. TBYS, episode number sixteen. I got two people in the building with me. Look at that, be crazy. Nick Davis and Maddie Lockwood, man, y'all give it up for him, y'all. Come on, y'all. Y'all need to give me some shoulder or something. All right, Kayla, you cut that. They not going to switch. I'm feeling it. Yeah, y'all was moving. What's going on? Man? What's up? Was that Eminem? Matt, why did you put on your glasses? I thought we were doing sunglasses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not to be outdone. I was about to say, he saw me with my shades, and he had to go ahead and put his on. I ain't mad at you. I'm feeling a little bright. I ain't going to lie to y'all, fellas. I did a few shows out there in, uh, in uh, La Jolla, San Diego. I, yo. La Jolla, have you ever been to San Diego? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I lived there for four years. Really? Yeah. What what part? That's where, where I started stand up. Really? Um, I live downtown, gas lamp. Damn. So yeah. I was over there by the beach. You been to San Diego, man? Yeah, uh, I was actually just there last week. Oh. Yeah. What you doing out there? Uh my girlfriend's sister's husband's or ex husband, they have a house down there. We're cleaning it and shit. And ah, then gotcha. spent spent the day uh by the beach? Uh actually we went to the gas lab district and ate. Yeah. Oh, I think I the gas lamp's the worst part of San Diego. That's really? what I hear. That's what I hear. It sucks. The beach is great though. Oh, I, I I had only been to San Diego one time. Uh, it was more so it was around like the military bases because I was uh doing a little excursion with a situation over there. But at the same time, it was it was really nothing to look at. But this time we was doing shows at the comedy store and uh, beaches. Were you in the condo? Front. No, it was not. We weren't in the condo. The it was in like an uh, Airbnb house type oh, okay. situation next right. to the beach. And when I tell you, it changed my life. It made me really want to move to San Diego yeah, for real. It's like, beautiful. It is so the the air is different out there. Yeah. The the cars are different. The rent is different. And you see, I came back looking like a star in <laughs> these shades. I know y'all like it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you look like Lunell, I think. <laughs> That's who you remind me of. Lunel on keto. I got these windshield wipers. <laughs> yeah. Look, I got the windshield wipers. Got the glare on it. And you know what's so funny too? I was looking at the the the, the length of the shades, and it matched my headlight. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but I'm feeling good. You know, actually, I, I felt like a star. I'm gonna take them up in a minute, but I, I felt like a star man because I was doing the shows, and uh, two people actually came up to me, and it was like, "Yo, I listened to your podcast," and that's what you need. You feel me? Like you always need that little bit of motivation. You hear what I'm saying? To let the to let you know that you're doing something right. You feel what I'm saying? You're not just talking into the void. Exactly. You're just not yep. talking to somebody. People that I don't even know. People came up to me and it was like, man, keep doing what you're doing. I listen to the podcast. They may not like, <laughs> they may not comment. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you out there and you listen. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So what's up with y'all, man? We got Labor Day coming up. Uh, what y'all got? What you got planned? I I mean I'm just podcasting every day basically. Even even going? on late Labor Day. I yeah. mean it, you, you working on Labor Day? Uh yeah, we'll be recording on Mondays, Mondays, Tuesdays with a couple of boys. Then I got King of the Sting on Tuesday. It never stops. Holidays Damn. don't really mean anything anymore. I hear that. I hear that. I know. I know, I in the uh, for the people out there in TBYS Studios. I know you guys know Nick. Uh, Kayla, can you pull up Nick's page for me? Uh. Nick, big time producer. Got uh, that King. Theo Von runoff I, I on my followers. I see. I see. I mean, you're doing it. You're killing it. Uh, I know everybody knows you from King and the Sting, but when we was talking about it before, you got your own podcast. Uh, talk about that, man. Yeah, that's really the passion project. Uh, it's called Another Podcast Network, and under that umbrella, with two show with two guys, I do. We do three different shows. Uh, one, we recap The Bachelor. Uh, one re- you watching The Bachelor? Uh, yeah, that show sucks. I I know. I thought I could be on The Bachelor one time. I thought I tried. I thought I could be the first black Bachelor, but it didn't work out. But they already got a black Bachelor. They went with Matt James. Exactly. Yeah. So boring. That guy was incredibly boring. Oh yeah. I mean, he sucked. I think they real. They need a real, a real dude. I think a lot of these dudes are like TV. If you know what I'm saying, like The Bachelor is like. For people that's like bored at home on some soap opera, want to eat popcorn in their house type feel. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't think The Bachelor is for real because it's not reality. Like, who 
what woman do you know in their right mind that's going to be just sitting there waiting for one man to get his mind together? That's really the essence of the, essence of the show, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and no doubt. And no one's going on there for love. It's become like a, a major league sports uh, organization, basically. Right. These people go on there to try to get followers to then right. have a con- career. If you are trying to go on there, you better have a squeaky, squeaky clean social media because they, yeah, they, they have an audience that will dig Ooh. and find any time you've used – you Anytime. said the R word in a tweet really? in t- 2011, you're fucked. You're out. Well, they gonna have to come get me because I know definitely I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna be in trouble. I mean, I mean, being in one of those situations, I don't know. If, I, I was never. I was more like flavor of love. Like that's more so my speed. You get a little, little raunchiness. You get a little, you know, flavor. Flavor was always a character when it came down to his choice of women. Uh, some of them women probably had some bullet holes in them. You know what I mean? They had like a spitting past. at each other you and feel shit. Me? They had a past in the background. Yeah. Um, I, I like that a little spicy. I feel like some of these women. I tried to watch a few episodes. I watched two. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, mm-hmm. but at that time, it was just like, oh yeah, all these women real estate. Uh, they have a they are a, a consultant. You feel what I'm saying? They all look like Kayla. You get what I'm saying? It's really. No diversity. No offense, Kayla. I, you know, you're beautiful. I appreciate it. But you know what I mean? It is what it is. I agree. And I actually watched Flavor of Love for the first time over the summer. We re- we re- recapped that first season on our Patreon. Yeah. And that shit was a good time. So good. Woman shit on the floor. Uh, I, mean- I like it. It's, it's a little bit more It's a little bit more reality than I feel. I got to take the glass. Of it's in my face. Oh, my God. But yeah, Bachelor has become a chore. Uh, I watched that on two times speed, yeah. uh, thanks to uh, Hulu and a video speed controller. And it, I, it's literally like taking notes before an exam, and then we go in and try to make jokes about it. But then we spun that off to Below Deck, which is a Bravo TV show that's a lot more fun, a gotcha. lot more digestible. Uh, we are no doubt the number one Below Deck podcast in the world, uh, not to toot our own horde. It's- so what is Below Deck? You got to break it down for me. It's uh, it's like the real world, except they li- they work on a yacht, okay. a charter yacht, okay. and then every three days a new group of rich people come on. So there's a dynamic between the workers who are the car- cast of the show; they're okay. fucking each other. Uh, oh, shit. Then you get like really angry, uptight rich people who are bitching about the service. Uh, there's a lot of intermingling. It- it's a fun show. It's a fun show. I will, if you have any inclination towards reality TV, I would recommend it. My man, I'm definitely, I see that's what I need. A person that's coming with recommendations. What are you doing, Matt? You're not doing much. You say you're from Wisconsin? Yes, sir. <laughs> Lacrosse, Wisconsin. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I'm not doing much. I was no, going to say, do you, watch, do you watch The Challenge? Uh, I, I was a big <laughs> challenge guy back in the day, yeah. but now my reality TV viewing has been... Like, it's only what I monetize, so I don't have time for it. But I, I'm like, challenge is like the second best reality show. I agree. Right CT is CT is a monster. One of the greatest athletes of our generation. Yeah, I have not yet to watch any of these shows. <laughs> the challenge is legit. So where is that on? Like Hulu Plus, MTV. Oh, it's in. It's like, I, I mean, it started in 2001. That's the problem. You gotta have 98? cable TV in order for me you to not anymore. Just really? gotta have. I mean, pay for the MTV app. But see. <sighs> That's true. I could do that. Yeah, you're right. It, it it definitely is something that's better if you've watched it for years because yeah. there's the same. It's literally like these people are in the league and they last for like ten years. And now the guys are all on steroids. They're like legit athletes. It's like, it's it's the fifth major sport. All right, shit. I watch it. You know what shows I've been watching? Kayla, pull it up. We was talking about uh this uh it's not reality TV. It could be reality TV, but it's it's a show called You. Nah, it was on, I believe, Netflix, mm-hmm. and it had it came out with two seasons. This is the Chris D'Elia show, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I stopped watching when Matt, he left. <laughs> <laughs> Who did it? No pun intended. <laughs> but I mean, at the same time, Matt, uh, yeah, he was on the show. He did uh, make a guest star. Uh, shout out Chris. But What was his role? What did he play? Yeah, I don't what, remember. What, was what, it, what did he do on the show? I, I don't remember <laughs> what the role was, Matt. <laughs> it was a silly goose time. I, exactly. I don't remember I don't remember what the role is, but at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Matt. <laughs> but at the same time, it is a good show. I mean, it's a show about basically this guy. He is over obsessed with a particular female. I mean, the first season was like that. And the second season was portrayed to be in that situation as well. Have you ever been in a relationship to where you were overly obsessed with a chick? Like, mm. 
to the point where you like kill the men who talk to her? <laughs> no, man, not like <laughs> I, that. I wouldn't say because that far, then but... that mean that make me an accomplice because I'm here with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I've been in love before, but never like stalking, like like looking through her window and shit. I've never done you. any of that. Got you. You haven't been in love, then. You just about to say. I know Nick has. Nick got that whole. <laughs> I drive by her house to see if someone else's hey, car is there. Really? That type of shit. Yeah, I've done that before. You've driven by a woman's house. Yeah, just to make sure. In an unmarked car. In an unmarked car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take the license plate off. Yeah. So you over here risking a whole felony driving without a license plate, just for love. I mean, that's a good. That's a good love. Nick, come on, man. I know you got some crazy stories. I already. T- I could already look at you and tell. I have crazy stories, but I have not, I haven't really been a peeping tom gotcha. outside my girl's window or gotcha. anything. I like, I'm actually in my first long term relationship, like more really? over six months right now. I live with my girlfriend. Uh, Wait, this is your first yeah, yeah. long term relationship? Yeah, yeah. And it's only been six months. No, no, no. Oh, I would I say, say I would say like oh, that's over six months. Oh, I got first you. I got relationship. You. We've been together almost two years now. Got you. Um, but uh, yeah, so. I was just like trying to grind in my twenties, trying to fi- find my way and stuff. Love was not the focus. That's what's up. You hook up when you can. That's what's up. Th- th- type thing. But, I hear uh, that. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear that. I definitely hear that. Play that uh, that trailer for me, Kayla. It's basically this you series, and uh, it's a good series. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. It's 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 one of them captivating series that you when you watch, like I'm pretty sure like reality TV is for y'all, with, like with Challenge and Below the Deck. A below deck, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's really one of them series that you like, damn, because it could be reality in a moment. Think about it. I mean, you say you'd never done it, but look how look how quick Matt uh, was able to jump in his car <laughs> and, <laughs> and roll by his girl house. You know what I mean? He haven't taken his glasses off yet. I mean, I, I would Just like to be this in love more. where you, I mean, you yeah, would kill it. somebody. Yeah. So what to call you? A name that's strong but not intimidating. Uh. Classic, but not basic. Literary, of course, because you will grow up in a house full of books. Oh, man, ain't a man that got a Choosing baby. Choosing your name is the first of a lifetime of decisions I'll make to give you the best life possible to protect oh, man. you, to shape who you will become. Who are you going to be? Henry. Oh, Henry. All right, turn it up. It looks like it's going to be something scary that I know I ain't going to be able to watch. Listen. <laughs> I mean, it does seem like a good, uh, a good, good storyline. I mean, I don't know if when you have a crazy dude, does the baby be crazy as well? Depends like, on how you raise it. That is true, but I mean, he does have a little. I mean, he have a little off switch. Who's he having the baby with? Do well, we know? in the story, basically, I remember from what I remember, it was an actress who they thought died in the beginning, and she ended up coming back. In the second season. And she was pregnant in the second season? I don't know, but it's apparently I think they've got it on. I think every everybody's having babies. Are y'all having babies? Uh, no babies yet, That's thank God. Saying. Try not to. That's what I'm Wait, try not to. Hey, I hear that. Try not to. I think lots of times the children, like I think that child will grow up to be some Batman vigilante type who kills obsessive boyfriends uh, because he hates his father. I think lots of times there's this seesaw with how people end up. Yeah, that is true. That's that's really some serial killer type shit. I mean, I'm not really into the whole. I mean, you got movies coming out like Candyman. I think it's gonna be the whole series for that. Like, have y'all watched it yet? Mm-mm. I hear it's gonna be. You watched it? I the the old one. I did. That, I like, did when watch I was way too one. young. Yeah, and that scared the shit out of me. Man, I cannot watch this. I can't watch the first one. I had to watch the first one just so I could remember how scared I was to get geared up to watch the second one i mean i'm a movie buff but it's just something about movies scary movies that i gotta watch in the daytime okay like i can't watch certain movies at night like at like certain hours because you know in los angeles we live in los angeles y'all i mean most of the time it doesn't get night until like 8 8 30 mm-hmm. right back home when i was in miami and stuff like that going to see movies it got nighttime around like 6 30 so you go see a movie at nine o'clock, it come out pitch dark, it'd be trees and everything elsewhere. You feel me? So you just never know what could jump out at you, especially seeing like The Exorcist or some some crazy. What's the scariest movie, movie you've seen? The It. The new one? Or the, the old the OG one. one. The old, the old one when he was in the house and like they had like the the pump. Oh my god. That movie used to scare the hell out of me. For real, for real. And scary movie. 
<laughs> uh, it was definitely up there. I saw all these movies when, like, I don't know about you, like, if you guys were shielded from watching, like, our movies, or, like, when growing up. I, wa- I watched everything with my I family. I can tell, Nick. <laughs> I already knew. So, like, Pet Cemetery, Poltergeist. Oh, no. Uh, it, those are some of the, those scared the shit out of me I as a child. I right there in the movie just like this. And then, you know, I sit there with my eyes closed just to make it seem like <laughs> like I'm watching it. Sometimes if I'm in a scary movie, like I literally fall, like uh, purposely fall asleep. Like I purposely fall asleep <laughs> just so I won't be a bitch. You and, know what I mean? In and then you do the like, thing where you got to watch like a rom-com oh, once man. it wraps up. So you like lighten oh, the mood man. before you go to bed. Man, it was one. Of, yeah, it was definitely animation. I'm definitely watching American Dad, Family Guy, yeah. some shit like that before yeah. I go to bed. I'm never. It, if I was ever watching a scary movie, I'm never. I'm not going to bed right away. Mm-hmm. And my, my people used to always tell me that, yo, Jay, it's only a movie. It's only going to be a, it, it, you know, it's not real. You know what I mean? But they damn sure make it look real. You know what I mean? Like, I I mean, that bitch covered my head with my face for real, for real. What's your scariest movie? Um, I would say Shallow Hell. <laughs> people, you never know who people really are. <laughs> yeah, he you know, accidentally dated a fat girl. That's the scariest thing I've ever heard of. Now, nah, man. And Tony Robbins Matt, assaulting nah, you in an hold elevator. On, hold on, yeah, hold on. Yeah, that too. That's more scary, hold on, actually. Hold on, hold on. We're not going to sit here and we're not going to disrespect my voluptuous ladies. Um, okay? Matt. You you know you just because you have lost weight and you've been working out. I can talk my shit. No, nah, you can't <laughs> talk nothing, y'all. I mean, I'm gonna let Matt tell it, but Matt, you know, you used to be the you know a big kid, right? Yeah. How much did you weigh? Um, the the heaviest I ever got was like two ninety. Jesus. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was just about to say. Not, I mean, it's nothing now. crazy, but it is. It is. How old were too you much. when you was two ninety? Um, twenties. Damn. Twenty five, maybe. Okay. Twenty to twenty five, probably. And you were like six one, six four. Well, I guess you. I mean, when you six four, you could put on. You know, how yeah. tall are you, Nick? I'm six two. Okay, you six two. I'm about six three myself. So, yeah. Mm, uh, <laughs> I think you switch those numbers around, maybe. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I was like, because I was tall, I was able to get fat and not and not be too fat. But what was your? Because I'm trying to bulk up and weight myself. What was your regimen at the time when you were eating? Was it like a lot of in and out, a lot of McDonald's. Uh, it was when I was in San Diego, so we were. I was drinking whiskey every night, and then at two o'clock in the morning, we'd go get burritos. Oh, and the shit. big ass fucking San Diego burritos and shit. Fuck and yeah, was in that yeah. You just eat a lot. You just have no. Just eat whenever you want, whatever you want. That's what I did over the pandemic. Hit my all time high, two oh six. I've always been like a string bean, yeah. and so when I put on a little weight, I get like skinny fat. It's it's ah. like it, it like you. I like you, people like that. You said you like you wear it well if you if you get a little bigger. It, it's it's not a good look, right? Uh, right. It, when you're when you're tall, skinny, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and, and got a little pouch. Yeah, definitely. I think is you know I'm I'm how much would you say you weigh now? Two oh five still. Uh, one ninety five. Been okay. been tightening it up, trying to. That's Damn. what's up. That's what's up. Uh, I mean. I, I think I, I rock this skinny fat look very well. Um, Are you fat? I got a little fat on my body. You know what it is? Is that once you get down to the ab area, it gets a little uh, disproportionate, right? So, you know, typically when a person who is skinny and got abs, they got the pat, pat, pat. You know what I mean? Like it come in threes, you know? Yeah. They come and they, they line up together. But see, the way my stomach is, I don't know if I had like an umbilical issue or something like that, but I have like one ab right here and I have like a pack of fat right here. Then I have one ab right here, then I have like a pack of fat right here. It sounds like you have that... tumors. Man, don't, don't <laughs> yeah, wish that on me. First of all, don't wish that on me, y'all. I'm very healthy. But <laughs> at the same time, it's just that I'm I'm my chest is good. I mean, you know what I mean? Like when I get oiled up, you feel me? I get in front of the ladies. You know what I mean? Got all my baby oil on me. The chest is looking what up to par. You have to suck in? Not even. Not oh. even. What I do is just, I just, you know, I just make the packs, just try to like form a little bit more. But I've been trying to work on my little, on my, on my workouts more. I try to go to the gym at least maybe three times maybe. a year. <laughs> <laughs> I go I go to the gym at least uh three times a week. At least three times a week. I try to make it possible three times a week. If not, a strong two. A strong two. You gotta at least try to get your fitness in. Even if you walking on a treadmill doing what you need to do, 
you got to get some type of activity in. Playing basketball, football, you know what I mean? Something, you know what I mean? You guys play basketball? Trying to get a a game with some people you may know on Wednesdays around Encino where we used to record King of the Sting. Oh, let me know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hoop hoop for real, for real. Is it indoors or outdoors? Because I can't even do it. I can't do it if it's outdoors. Uh, We were going to try to get a game outdoors, but I don't know. It's up for debate. We know a couple gyms that we could play, but it's like, Gym time. Can you get it? I got you. I got, I mean, we have a Wednesday indoor game coming back in oh, a couple dope. weeks. Really? Mm-hmm. Let me know, man. Y'all got my number. You know, I come out there like Jordan and with the 4 5 on my back. <laughs> we come out of retirement. We tried to plan a team together. Yeah, we did. It didn't work out, though. It was when we was at the, um, with Renee and them, right? Yeah. Listen, man, we was in this whole, now, now, Matt, who was the star of the team? Go ahead and tell the people. Um, I would say Renee. Renee? Yeah. How do, Y'all, Renee barely was in the game. (laughs) I'd say you were the star of the game, but it's only because you took 95% of the shots. Well, somebody got to (laughs) shoot. No, we, so we're, we're in like this this ragtag comedians league team. And the first game we play is against a team that has like two two guys that played D1 on it. Right. They're like dunking on us, getting mad that we're fouling them. Right, 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 right. We're like a bunch of fat losers on this team. (laughs) Right, right. I've never played organized basketball in my life. (laughs) Playing against college guys, it was insane. And who you said, who you said again had to take all the shots back? (laughs) I mean, (laughs) I mean you, but that whole team was embarrassing. No, we was an embarrassing team. I mean, it was really a good time though, man. You know, I was showing my little, you know, my little moves. I had, I had to come out of retirement again to play with them because I hadn't played since Juco uh, in high school, really in high school ball. And I played a little bit of uh, G college, you know, scrimmage league. But at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to dive further and ask what that really meant you playing Juco. <laughs> Juco is a short for junior college. But at the same time, they got the scrimmage league that they let to see if they really want you on the team. And then. Unfortunately, I got cut up to the junior scrimmage. But, hey, it is what it is. I, I, I got to live by my dreams. I feel like if you're going to play ball, you can't be you can't be five. Well, I'm like I'm like 5'11 with these joys on. You know what I mean? On a good day. I'm waiting for my second growth spurt, y'all. Fuck you if you're hating. But y'all being 6'2", six, 6'4". Six, what are you actually, 5'9"? No, nah, I'm literally like 5'11". Without shoes, I'm 5'10 and a half. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I believe that, but all right. Yeah, uh, I, fu- I fucking miss basketball. I don't play enough a- anymore. But University of Minnesota intramural champion Hell right yeah. here, B League. Uh, but <laughs> they had A, B, and C. Uh, but uh, we did it. We did the thing. The- and I'm always end up. I have to. I end up having to guard the big guy always for some reason. Like you do look like the type of person that's gonna be fouling a lot, Nick. I ain't gonna I, lie. I, I'm. I'm not following a lot, you look like but you I'll was, put a body on someone. You, is, you look like you was hacker Nick. You just coming in that thing, just run our testing people. Shot goes up, I find a body. I hear I, that. I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I will let the ball bounce. Someone else get the rebound. I, I'm going to put a, my, my body on a, my man. What is your what is your, your style of play? Uh, what's your style of play, Matt? You, Me, I play point. I always shoot threes. It's the new league. Yeah. You need someone 6'7". I got, got that six step back. No, I, I mean, I play Man, with comedians, yeah. and uh, they're all Man, tiny yeah. little people, and so I played on low, and just I get fouled every time I touch the ball. Matt, it's awful. I've, Matt don't remember that I've seen him play before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the reason why I asked I think I was still question. fat when we played, though. That's the re- yes, you was still fat when you played. That's why I was like, I'm asking you a rhetorical question. You got to see you know me. I got I mean? moves now, bro. Oh, please. You lose the weight, that don't mean you get moved. Oh, yes, it does. Kayla, <laughs> go, to the, go to the shoes. I'm Listen, nimble y'all. now. Yeah, man, Th- that was actually my, th- the last thought I had before I came here. I was like, I wish I had doper shoes. I'm fucking coming, bro. With, coming with the Velcro straps. These are like sustainable. kind of sick, though. Listen, they're sustainable. First too. of all, first of all, man, what we're not gonna do is we're not gonna come in this podcast lying to people. Okay, <laughs> you don't That's like what those. We're not gonna do. What, what is what the V though? What's do? that brand? Veja. I see, I see it all the time. What is it called? Veja. Okay, I'm with it. It's I'm like with it. it's like French Brazilian. Where do you get them from? Uh. These specifically, I think, got out of a catalog. I saw some at. I had the same shoes with laces from uh, Nordstrom's. Take off and the shoes. Girl... Let the camera see what the shoes go. Let me see. Take off the shoes. They're dirty too. Is that that camera? Nick what? still got shoes <laughs> with the straps, y'all. <laughs> That's your camera right there, Nick. Look, Nick still got. Look, look show it up. 
Nick the, still got shoes. For the people only with, Exactly. With his, his shoes still got the... <laughs> <laughs> Velcro. I'm not mad at it, man. You know. My grandma raised me growing up. I hear that. And she was always... uh. My shoes were always untied. She was pissed. Uh, she got me Velcro shoes when I was like 12. I was really embarrassed about it then. Uh, the same thing still happens today. So my girlfriend brought me Velcro shoes. But this time I was like, these are actually kind of dope. Uh, Those are dope. But I just need you to have some shoe strains, Nick. <laughs> I mean, you were too grown <laughs> to be still having. And you got three of them. I'm glad you ain't had. What if you had two big ones? That would have been terrible. <laughs> or but one. Just it, the one that covers oh my the giant God. one. Yeah, hell yeah. I don't even know how you do it. But, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, do you have all your shoes like that, Velcro? Uh, No. These are the first pair. But it might be my thing going forward. Honestly, my favorite shoe I ever had growing up was the uh, Allen Iverson 5 slip-ons. Mm. I had, like, four pairs of those in a row and uh yeah fuck laces it's i got things to do you know what shoes you need you need besides these you need those those self lacing nikes that they came out with yeah. it's like an electronic yeah. nike that you could basically you got to charge the motherfuckers up now but they might be up your alley because they light up and stuff you feel what i'm saying i think they took that idea from uh back to the future they already had Idea. those shoes that Definitely. they made but nike made the prototype right for those right ones. exactly so nike had made it back in the day when back to back to the future oh, was going on they just released them to the mass public but these these shoes right here i got this new segment y'all that i call the shoe of the week and and Kayla, if you want, if you go to the next pictures, I don't know if you can sc sc scroll to the next one. I gotta but, say, I'm honored. Thank you, Velcro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, it's not me. <laughs> no, it's not your turn. It's not your turn. If y'all, if y'all, you know, if y'all wanted to see, uh, you know, these are lightning fours. Uh, these are my my babies. You know, probably one like maybe twice. These are good shoes to have, man. Sometimes when it comes down to shoes, I'm in the I'm in the sneaker game. Um. You can really make you some good money off of a, a a good sneaker. I mean, if you have access to them, you know what I mean. Matt, what shoes you got on? Uh, I got Dunks on. Yeah, you ain't got to put those up. <laughs> <laughs> they, these are the most comfortable <laughs> shoes I've ever owned. I love these. They are. Yeah, I wear these every day almost. I, so how'd you get into the game? Because I've I've shoes were nfts to me before nfts it's For like sure. i know people are making a bunch of fucking money on it but right. i feel like now that i've heard about it it's too late so i'm not even trying yeah uh a hook me up with some dope shoes and b what how, do you have a plug it works at a company or something is definitely, your mom work for adidas I, definitely i can steal packages up. off of people's porches hey mm -hmm. listen go to that next uh, go to that next uh the next slide this is essentially what i do i work for fedex and uh <laughs> <laughs> I work for FedEx, and uh, I essentially am able to get shit that's falling off the truck. No, I'm joking. Um, when it comes down to shoes, I was just had a, a love for shoes growing up. Always had the ability to get like Jordans and stuff like that. And um, I used to go to like little mom and pops. But when the shoe, a lot of people don't understand. Like when it comes down to shoes and the whole shoe game, is that it's not necessarily about going to stores anymore like you can't just walk into if you want an exclusive shoe see i can get your shoes anywhere matt you know what i'm saying i don't know about that matt you can literally walk into ross and get them shoes. hell no you know i could you don't like these both of y'all i could go to ross and get y'all shoes but at the same time let's put it like this certain certain coveted shoes right they are harder to get like travis scott shoes uh they got all these bots and stuff like that i mean these shoes that i got on the yellows I mean, they are supposed to be hard to get in a sense. Um, so you on the apps and you're doing like all the, you're like, got to get a lottery and you get a ticket or you just have a plug? Well, I just pretty much have a plug, right? So, I mean, when you look at it in, I mean, from being around everybody in the comedy industry, mm -hmm. you get to know people, you network and people, they tell you, the people that work in these stores tell you that, hey, a lot of these times, you know, the stores like Champs and Foot Locker have already sold away your pairs of shoes to a reseller. You know, they've already given your pairs away. Like Nike probably shipped it to Champs Foot Locker or whatever or whatever, whoever had the shoes. But the person that works there is typically a reseller in their, in their own right. Mm -hmm. So they know people. They know a network of people. They cousin know cousins. They know who's coming then they, those shoes are pretty much already sold. And yeah, you 
you raffle them off, but it's not it's not essentially the 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 raffle that people expect, you know what I mean? I was just tired of losing when it came down to getting certain shoes. Like how many times can you say you go to the sneakers app? Do you go to the sneakers app often? Like, do you try to like win on sneakers? Uh uh-uh. uh. Do you try to well, I guess you don't try to win on sneakers, but I, I might I, I wanna I just want one a year adult pair. Uh and I, I might start getting on the app. But is if it's futile, like you I just gotta talk to no, you. No, exactly. I mean <laughs> definitely you just talk to me. I mean, is to to jump on the app. I mean, again, you're if you're not tech savvy and pull up that bot, uh, that that picture killer with the, the the FedEx packages, you know. If you you know these people, you know they got a whole bunch of Travises, like these are covered in shoes, and this is happening all around the globe. Let's say if Travis Scott released a, a hundred thousand pairs of shoes, and this truck probably got a hundred and fifty pairs in it just by themselves. You know, everybody's supposed to get at least one or two, mm-hmm. you know, even if you a store, you'll get like, you know, maybe like 60 pairs. You know what I mean? Something like that. Mm-hmm. So when you got this, the, the shoe game is so, so corrupted. You know what I mean? I, I mean, think about uh, anything else that's corrupted. I mean, well, gambling, I, I would say is, is corrupted, but, you know, sometimes people throw games and stuff like that and just so they can win money and stuff like mm-hmm. that. It's kind of like like the shoes in itself. Mm-hmm. Like people will typically tip the the scale when it comes down to getting shoes. You think you'll be able to get shoes. So many friends that I know hit me up and was just like, yo, I'm trying to get this particular pair of shoes because the app said I, I won, but I didn't win. Or she... <laughs> I mean, God, for God, forgive me for this. Jay, you know Jay, mm-hmm. Jay Shop. I mean, my man, a hundred grand. He got, he got some, some, some Travises. One of them off the app, you know. Damn. And it was, he was so happy. Great. We went to 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 Tampa, not Tampa, uh, La Jolla. Shout out to La Jolla, San Diego. Um, doing shows. I said, Jay, what's wrong with your foot? And. <laughs> He had one. They shipped him one shoe bigger than the other. <laughs> you know, I I love Jay. You know, it's and he's still rocking it. Him. Yeah, fuck but, yeah. But see that that lets you know how coveted the shoe is mm-hmm. because it's like, man, like I I, I still want to rock the damn shoe, even though you know it. it I may be uncomfortable. And you know trip. what I mean. What's your favorite shoe of all time? It had to be like the Jordan Eleven. That yeah. was my, I had those yeah. in sixth grade. Yeah, for the Jordan, the bread elevens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What about you? Um, I don't know, Matt. You I ain't like even um, those shoes. You know what I used to wear when I was in high school? What high top fat farms with the strap? I could see that on you. So sick. I can see that. Where are you from again? Michigan. Um, Michigan, yeah. Was it a part Velcro of the strap? I, I like shoes, but I like to wear them. I don't like to collect them. So yeah. I'll, I'll spend like 150 max on shoes. But mm-hmm. I have like a pair of ones, a pair of tens. But I wear them. What and was your you question? Dog them out. Huh? What part of Michigan are you from? Grand Rapids. What? When did you move out to LA? Um, I moved to San Diego in like 2012, and then LA in 2017. Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha. you. Would you ever move back to Grand Rapids? No. I think that's gonna be good, man. Especially with Kay Cunningham coming down to the pike. Yeah, Pistons are gonna be legit. Oh yeah, I think the Pistons are gonna be dope for sure. Definitely gonna be dope. And he like likes Detroit, which is so yeah. rare for. Well, an that's that's they always get okay. Out. Let's not go that far. He does though. He, he likes he likes Detroit rap, okay. and so he wants to be. Let's in Detroit. not let's not go there. <laughs> I mean, that's Listen, what he said. That's what he said. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's but that's, most that's, athletes that come to Detroit aren't excited about being in Detroit. He was. It's just like Giannis in Milwaukee. Even if it's fake, he's it's, at least trying. It's so valuable when they love the small yeah. market. Like you, I don't know that that it means goes he's not going to be gone in three years. Hopefully, hopefully. Okay, first of all, Giannis is an exceptional case because Giannis, when he decided to come out, he was more so. You know, look where he was coming from. Mm-hmm. He was coming from Greece. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, like unprecedented circumstances. Like he was really in one of those situations where he, that NBA G League tryout that turned into an NBA, him getting drafted, was a a godsend for him. K. Cunningham is a totally different, a totally different story. Yeah. Like he was a prodigy from jump. Like he's probably had hundreds of thousands already in terms of endorsements. Rather, way better than Giannis. You feel me? Under the table, he's six eight, dribble, shoot. I don't know if he's way better than Giannis. Not, not, not right now. I don't think he will. I'm about to say not right now. 
I mean, you just never know. Giannis but the is fact generational. that I'm well, 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 let's put it like this: we didn't know Giannis was generational at that time. Right, Nick, come on now. I I didn't. Come on now. But someone who handles the ball with that, just his body type, True. and and he was so young, and True. you knew it was like one of those things where he's going to get thicker. I was like, we're set up pretty well. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He's 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 the Greek freak. He's I like that he's such a nice guy. That's yeah. the thing that gets me sometimes. It's like God, Lee, like. You can't have no type of no type of thugness, meanness to you. You feel what I'm saying? Like, like think about it. Uh, uh, Dallas Pistons. I mean, Dallas Pistons fans. Uh, Ben Wallace. Yeah. Uh, Big Shot Chauncey Billis. Yeah. Um, Rashid. Rashid. Yeah. Exactly. Like, a lot of them had some type of edge to them. Giannis done won a championship just by being so nice. Like he even had he over here uh uh influencing me in a way. Because I saw, because like you know, when, after he won the championship, you know, obviously his face is all over social media. Chick Fil A. So, so he was at the Chick Fil A, right? So we were talking about Chick Fil A, and Giannis went and ordered a lemonade and Sprite mix, <laughs> yeah. and it was like something that had never been done. So I was just like, mm. so I'm sitting at home. I'm like, lemonade and Sprite. Like, who would get that? You know. I to the, to this day, from that day to this day, every time I go to Chick Fil A, that's what I order: either <laughs> cherry coke or lemonade, and you know what I mean. You get fifty nuggets too. Nah, <laughs> hell no. I only get the eight piece. Shout out Chick Fil A, I love you. I just really started getting in touch with a uh, Chick Fil A sauce again. That shit, it, I was really off of it for a while because it gave you high cholesterol. Matt, you know what I'm talking about. But at the same time, <laughs> but at the same time, it was really one of those situations where. I was, I was, I was fucked up, man. I, I, yeah. I, you mentioned Sheed. Sheed, he's one of my favorite players of he all was time. So good. He's and people always talked about like people think of it as like a thug and shit, but everybody said he knew all five positions on the court. Like he, did. he knew the X's and O's more than anybody. He did. Uh, defensive style work. He he's the shit. Yeah. I fucked he did. So I always like Rasheed, man. He used to have. I used to like him and Ben Wallace together in terms yep. of like. They they bulliness about it, especially mm-hmm. back then with old school basketball. Because like when you think of sports nowadays, it's all about the the finesse. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Being able to they really letting players go like on breakaway yep. layups and stuff like that. I'm like certain plays that I see people score on. Like okay, certain players that you know like Kyrie Irving for sure. Mm-hmm. Like he's gonna be. He's 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 skilled. You mm-hmm. see how he break people up. Steph Curry. You see how he break people up, but. Sometimes I be looking at these plays and the the ball is right here and their hand is like literally right here. And all you got to do is just, you know what I mean? Come a little bit further to tip this ball, but you just let it go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I I get it. Basketball is a a motion sport, but I remember back in the day it was a little bit more physical. Like, you know, you put your arm on people. Yeah, they, they held the Shaq and Kobe Lakers to like 60 points in finals games. Bro. Insane. Bro. The game and, sucked to watch, bro. bro. And Hell right, yeah. Right Shout after out. right after Michael left, like 99, 2000, I, I, what you're describing, I'm thinking of the Eastern Conference when it was like the Knicks mm-hmm. and the Pacers, and they, they were the games were in like the 80s, and they were just beating the shit out of each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for some reason, I just love that era of basketball. I was the right age for it. Nah, fuck the Pacers. I love, man. Listen. What? You said fuck, fuck the fuck Pacers? Fuck Reggie Miller. Fuck the Pacers. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa, man. Now, that's not what we're not going to do. I love Indiana Pacer fans. I mean, I mean, obviously you gonna say that because you're from Malice in the Palace. Did you watch the documentary yeah. on? Um, yeah. It was dog shit. It was. It, <laughs> it was. Listen, Jermaine O'Neal produced the thing. It was so one sided. No it was horse shit. No, that, that is true. But at the same time, Matt, Matt, Matt. Did let's, you watch the Malice? Watch- I, ha- I haven't, but I heard. Let's talk about okay, it. I but heard what he. You heard. know about the it's Malice in the Palace, though. Bro. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. so you I remember okay, where okay, it was? Okay. I yeah. watched. The, okay. I was watching the game when it okay, happened. Okay. Right. I was too. It was so funny when that shit happened. It was crazy. I was yeah. like, "Yo, what the?" But I, you know what? That made me like Ron Artest even more. Why? Be- bro, he's laying on the scores table. Yeah. Cocky. Now, not now. Cocky. Matt, he could have been cocky for laying on the scores table. But again, that's his job. He was he, doing a bit. He right. Was, he was like, "See, I'm relaxed. I'm not right. gonna get another right. technical." Right. Right. He was on the scorers table, chilling. He's at work, man. <laughs> He's. This is his domain. Sure. This is where he is allowed to be at. You feel what I'm saying? Sure. 
all of a sudden, a cup comes from the third, fourth row. Now, I ain't going to lie to you. Whoever threw that cup. Money was a goddamn. He should have been a nigga. He should have been uh Patrick Mahomes, uh Tom Brady. He should have been they backups for real because the way he threw that cup with that soft touch <laughs> and that thing where you bah, hit Rod Artest right on the face. Right now, again, as an NBA player, you gotta have some type of professional. That's why it's called NBA. National Basketball Association for professional, you know, it's for professionals, right? But again, Matt, you hit Ron Artest. Yep. You get what I'm saying? Like after that, all, all, all bets are off. Like Ron Artest is just like a person that you can't really seem to get through. Let me ask you a question though. Let's say if the 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 the, the roles were reversed and the shoes on the other foot, yep. And somebody threw a cup and hit. Rasheed. Yeah. Fuck that team. Thank you. I think Rasheed would have <laughs> yeah. tore up the I team mean, as well. Oh, obviously, yeah. obviously I'm, no, Rasheed had more self-control than Ron Artest. He probably had a little what? bit of self-control. For he, sure he did. He, he had the record he, of technicals. He had like 42. Yeah, that's, on, that's, that's on the court, though. Off the court, Rasheed, is, he wasn't like that at all. Rasheed, he was like super nice. He was Always respectful high. to fans and shit all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, if somebody would have threw a cup and hit him. I've been hit by a cup before. It doesn't hurt that much. Nah, Not enough for me to go up and, all, and fight a guy. Listen. Did you see? Okay. Did you see the velocity of that cup? First of all, you can tell yeah. by the velocity of that cup that it had at least 35% left, uh, 35% yeah, beer left in that cup. Maybe. It, it wasn't like a, a light cup, right? So if you throw that cup and the bottom of the cup hits you, I'm not talking about the top of the cup. At least if the top of the cup hits you, it's kind of like not, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you can just get beer on top of you, but it's not going to hit you. But if that bottom of the cup hits you, you know, obviously, like I said, is pro- I mean, he a six ten, six. I mean, six eight, six nine athlete. He could probably be able to take the cup hit. But again, it's I mean, Ron Artest. He, That's all I'm gonna say. Ron Artest started it. Ron Artest finished it. He threw away the Pacer season. Fuck the he Pacers. really did because they yeah. was really gonna go to the championship after. No, nah, they wouldn't beat the Pistons. He was playing oh, so definitely. well. Not a chance. Oh, that was the season that they and won that twice? Was, and that was the season that the Spurs won. That was the first year the Spurs won, and they were, like, one of the most incredible teams to ever play basketball. Mm. They wouldn't have beat the Spurs. But Reggie and them was balling that year. Yeah, they, they, was, they were. They was on fire that year. They, they was going to be – they was the best team in the East that year. Yeah, arguably. Just because arguably. y'all had – what, y'all would have came off y'all, 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 y'all second back – y'all would have been the three-peat? No, season? they only won one. Only right, won right. 2004. It would have been our second y'all if won, we won that year. I thought the Pistons won twice. That was the the Isaiah Thomas team once. Got you, got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. This team only won once. You know who I I think? Uh, yeah, she... it went it went Bulls, then it went uh, uh, Spurs, mm-hmm. Pistons, Spurs, Lakers, Lakers, Lakers. Yeah. Uh, then I yeah. fell off. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be back to three peat, man. Except after the Warriors, but or two peat was the Warriors, but um. I used to go down YouTube rabbit holes of Ron Artest interviews. He, I mean, he's an absolute maniac. Yeah. Uh, he he was. They were talking. Ron about, Artest is a G. Yeah. Go ahead. They, after a playoff game, they they asked him. They're like, oh, how about the rough play out there?" He's like, "This shit ain't rough, dude. I was at I was at the park when I was a teen, and a guy broke off a table leg, stabbed a guy right in the heart. He died right there bro, in the court, bro. And it's it's one of my favorite interviews of all time. Ron Artest is so gangster. He was once. Able, it was so funny to me because I was watching the same interview that you was watching. They was basically saying that Ron Artest decided to quit mid season or before the season so he could go shoot a rap career yeah. or do a rap album. Yeah. I was like, this is the type of dude that I need on my team. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, to be fair, I, I love Ron Artest. I love Steven Jackson. I love right. Jermaine O'Neal. I love Steven Fuck Jack- Reggie Miller. I just hate the pit. The whoa, Pacers. whoa. We ain't gonna disrespect Reggie now. Reggie is my guy. Trash. Re- Reggie is never, my guy. Never Shoot won it. a championship. You know who Reggie, you know who uh, uh, Ron Artest remind me of? Caleb, pull up that that last clip. It's this, uh, it's this, it's this uh, security guard in Florida. And he basically got arrested for, uh, just go over a little bit. I'll tell you when to go. Go to the right. Move to the, oh, there it is, there it is. Try me. Let me tell you something. This hallway, I run. When mm. that bell ring, you in my hallway. Yo, Underst- yo what? Do what you gonna do, bring your dad, bring your uncle, bring them all. I ain't scared of nothing. Bring them all. 
You want to phone the call? Ooh. You stay? Hey, come on. I know. Y'all go to class. What is going on? Come on. Y'all go to class. I'm going to hook it off. Come on. All right, Kaylee, you can cut that. How old is this kid? Like middle school? Man, seventh grade kid. Jesus. Yeah, he's Seventh grade kid. Now, again, I'm not going to, I don't condone hitting no kid, especially if you are a person that is of authority. Like, how in the world? The kid's not even talking shit. He's not. And at the same time, like, how do you take the job that serious? Yeah. Like, for real. Yeah, I mean, that's an ego thing. Like, it definitely is an ego thing. Yeah. That's definitely, he was mad yeah, about something. Yeah, that kid had an ego. <laughs> yeah. The kid, fuck, right? Fuck that stupid <laughs> kid up. <laughs> he needed to be taken down to peg two. We're on the same page. Nick, we don't know what Nick, happened before this video, Nick, you know? Nick. I mean, so what y'all y'all saying that this kid and him had a history? They basically been beefing with each other like yeah. the, the, the that school. kid fucked his wife. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's what's crazy. They don't show you that. We never he get did. the whole story in these viral videos. Listen, fucking yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Listen, just one sided. Okay, he is a good looking kid. He got a little, he got a little, he got a little Mexican look or whatever. But at the same time, I really don't feel like the kid had anything to do. With this situation, I mean, I think this is definitely an ego thing. Yeah. When it comes I mean, down to say to, this is my hallway, I, I, I'm like, bro, it's like you like security guard. Just because he's <laughs> late to go to class, you gonna punch the dude? You gonna punch the little man in the chest? Yeah. Like if it was for real, my kid, we was definitely gonna be fighting. You fucking popped him too. But I did read the specifics on this dude, the security guard. They say that he is a uh, six seven, two forty. Yeah, he's giant. Uh. And he does have a few felonies, so I don't know. I might have need. I'm if it happened to my kid, we might need some uh, police assistance <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I pull up to the school. But I'm gonna be mad. Yeah. But I'm gonna be mad with the po- with the police. Yeah, again, I think we're all saying the same thing. You, I, I just gotta respect a man who's so passionate about his job. Yeah. I mean, I bet he was a ha- hall monitor in school growing up, and it's like this is his dream. This is my hallway. That's always been his Nick, mantra. I'm not condoning that. <laughs> I, <laughs> what if that is true? Like, what if that is true? Like, when you are a hall monitor, do you think you grow up? Because you know they do say some hall monitors grow up to be police officers. Yeah. Uh, people who want authority. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Yeah. Have you ever been? Have you ever been a hall monitor? God no, God no. I was I, I was being chased by hall monitors. Uh, I used to be a hall monitor, fifth grade. You got hall monitor energy. Nah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a hall monitor in fifth grade. It was really one of the situations that I was blessed to be the hall monitor, and I was I took that position very seriously. Yes, I did. I was in there. Did you wear like the the sash or whatever? Oh yeah, you for sure. Yeah. I had the sash, and I had the one that had the buckle that had came across the chest. Yep, and was orange. I used to switch off. I used to have the green. The green, uh, the one that they do for crosswalking. Yep. And then I used to have the one that came across the chest just so if I wanted to switch it up with my uniform and stuff like that, let people know I'm important for real, for real. <laughs> now that I think about it, I'm regretting not being a hall monitor because if you're bestowed that responsibility, then you can really like, you can you be running hustles in, in the hallway. Yeah, bro. You can, Corruption. Yeah. Look at the police. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about it. I mean, there's really one of the situations when it comes down to, you know, whenever you get like a little bit of authority, especially in a fifth grade setting, you know, people always late walking in and out of class. Um, when I was a bad kid, I don't know about y'all. Like I was one of them kids that I used to always try to get over a little bit if I could like see what I could get away with. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, and when I was able to, you know, I would think I was cute as a button. When I felt like I could use my looks to get to what I, to get the things that I needed, <laughs> Oh man, I used it to my advantage, especially as a hall monitor. I was getting shit crazy, crazy, crazy. Damn, these glasses make my. With it, with that being said, though, Kayla, how much time we got? Okay, man. I appreciate y'all, man, for kicking it. You know, kicking it with me. Oh, absolutely. Uh, go ahead and play us out, Kayla. Um, uh, man, before we play us out, though. Uh, before we press play, tell the people what y'all got coming up next, man. Uh, can I? Uh, so. Go to another podcast show. That's that's the one that's not related to reality TV that I do with two guys. I just told the story of uh, my run in with the smiley face killer. You guys ever heard of the smiley face killer? They got a smiley face killer in La Crosse, Wisconsin, uh, my hometown. From 1997 to 2006, there were eight college age uh, guys who had unexplained drowning deaths, and it was always after nights out at the bar. Uh, and they were texting people saying they were lost, and then they were found in the river. 
And some cops from New York started a conspiracy theory or maybe a real thing that it was some killer that was coercing these guys out of the bar, taking them down the river and drowning them. Uh, And then always around the scene, the, the details are so loose. They'd be like, oh, within 50 yards to a couple miles, there was always graffiti of a smiley face. Uh, that was his calling card. And uh, that happened to me one night. Uh, there's a big drinking culture. Uh, I was about to say, you got, you got took up by the smiley face killer? Uh, here's what happened. Here's what we do know. I went to a bar. I black out. I wake up. Where was your friends when you black out? In a out, river. Uh, in a snowbank next to the river. Damn. My blood alcohol level is 0.397. And... Uh, no, police found me in a snowbank. I woke up in the hospital. They said my blood alcohol was 0.397. Oh and I can only imagine that the smiley face killer tried to get me that night, and I fought off an assailant or multiple assailants. Or, and, it was, and it's not or, just irresponsible or, drinking. Or, or, no, you, 0.397 you, uh, Nick, Nick. is not. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> there, he'd have, I mean, for him to he'd have to like pour alcohol fellas, down Fellas, there throat. is a killer out there. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start blaming all my shit on Listen, I'm about to say, you, you had to run into the smiley face killer and say, I'm about to say, you got a smiley face on. I am the smiley I face killer. <laughs> Motherfucker. Look it up. It's real. He could hey. get us all at any moment. I blacked hey. out a couple nights ago. and Yeah, it was definitely. Caleb, play us out. I beat up a serial killer. Listen, man. Where's Matt got going on? Yeah, watch that. That's me. 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 That's uh, listen to my podcast, The Big Humble Podcast. Okay. Um, we just had our first clip go viral on TikTok, which is cool. That's dope. That's dope. You out uh, there doing dances and shit? No. Okay. Uh, no, it's just a clip of our podcast. Gotcha. Not, we don't do TikTok dances. How many TikToks you been doing? Uh, we do like one or two a week. That's what's up. And how many have you put up there? Probably. This is maybe our 20th, maybe 15 to 20. Dude, That's I good. think there's something where if you're like posting, because we did that. We just started on TikTok, I've, I, like podcast, but outside. Yeah. They, they they have a huge TikTok following, just clips of their podcast. Yeah. On our like our 20th one, it went just mad viral. And I think they just, they'll fucking. Yeah, I fuck with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we're we're going to keep posting. I well, mean, shit, I'm going to yeah. start posting mine. Oh, do it for sure. Yeah, you definitely should. TikTok is where it's at. All right, cool. It doesn't even have to be edited that much. Just the thing, a little title. Captions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have yeah. captions. Mm-hmm. Got you. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. Stand up around wherever. You doing stand up in LA? Follow me on Instagram, at Daddy Lockwith. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that. Yes, sir. And we know the real Nick Davis on, on Instagram. Thank you, sir. Get you some longer shorts, uh, Matt. And uh, <laughs> with that being said, man, TBYS, y'all see me in the glasses, so you know I mean business. Look at your shorts. Hey. Yeah, they all look. Yeah, they Same all thing. <laughs> Play as I gala. Uh Damn. Damn. We are uh, episode y'all 16. That shit, that true, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. y'all, man. We got uh, yeah. Yeah. Nick Davis and Maggie Lockwood. Pay the rent one more week. Y'all make sure y'all comment, like, and subscribe. We out. We out.